sit down and play a little wizardry today. All right. So, I talked a bit about this game the last time I streamed, but this is Wizardry 6. Bane of the Cosmic Forge is the name of the game. And what is the one above your head? So the one above my head is going to be the auto map. As we play the game, the map will appear in that black box. And we'll see that as we go. So let's see. Just to give you a brief rundown of the storyline for this game. In this game we've created a party that is going to explore a castle in search of an ancient object called the Cosmic Forge. What the Cosmic Forge is is a pen. It's a magical pen that anything you write with it will become reality. So it's a long sought after relic. And that is what the adventurers are searching for. Through studies of legends and lore, they believe that this abandoned castle was once the home of a king who was the last known possessor of the Cosmic Forge. And that's what brings us here today. So I'd like to introduce the party. So what we have here is a cast of characters that I've created. We have Kyler, the ninja. That, for all event, uh, sake and purposes, is my character. So I was able to roll a ninja. We have Trevi, the human lord, based off one of our frequent viewers. We have Claire, the Felper monk, that is a cat person and a monk. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is their specialty. Next up, we have Lulu, which is a bard. This is going to be our thief slash magic user character. Mooks is a mook is the race of this character, and it's sort of like a uh, Bigfoot slash Sasquatch Chewbacca type of furry creature. That's what we have here. And then we have Sato, who is a draken priest per her own request. So we have a priest that is a acid breathing dragon. And then we have Danny, the fairy mage, just as we all discussed in the last episode. So let's take a good look at these characters. We're going to equip them right off the bat. We have shurikens. There's our primary weapon, secondary item, select a helmet, why are these not working, why is this not working, equip, there we go, you know, Seto says we're cool as hell. So let's look at Trevi here. Equip him with a broadsword, his steel helmet, a quilt tunic, quilt leggings, and some buskins. Claire. Equip Claire with a bow staff and some robes and sandals. Lulu is going to have a sling with some bullet stones, cloth shirt, cloth pants, and a loot. Sato cat. Quarterstaff, robes, sandals. And then Danny, the staff, robes, and sandals, and a couple scrolls. And so this is our party. This is what we're going to start the game with. 
So let's start a new game. Turn the music down just a hair. All right, so here we go. Remember, came to the castle in search of an ancient artifact. Approaching the gate with confidence, you know if things get too hairy, you can always turn and run back out. You are in the entrance chamber of the castle. It appears to be empty, and a heavy coat of dust covers the floor. Small scampering noises echo down far distant corridors, a reminder that it is you who are the intruder here. So these old games, they're entirely playable with the mouse this time around. I can turn left and right by using these icons on the screen, or you can use the keyboard. So. Let's see what we have with this door here. The door is locked. Now, we have two characters this time that have thief skills. We have Kyler the Ninja and Lulu the Bard. So let's see what we can do here. Let's see if Kyler... Nope, there's not any chance Kyler's going to be able to unlock that. Let's try Lulu. Nope. Not at all. So this door shall remain locked unless we can force it open. Tell you what, let me review something here. Let me see who has the strongest score. Strength of 13, strength of 12. I don't know that anybody's strong enough to force the door down. Maybe Claire. We'll try that. No, not even close. All right, so on to the next door. There we go. So we have corridors going in several different directions. leading up and down. Let's map out the perimeter here and then we'll come back and decide which way we want to go. So we have our first encounter. It is one rogue. I think we're going to be okay. So you notice when we do combat, we now have the option to how we want to attack, swing or thrust. Claire is going to bash. Now this is a cool one. For Seto, breath is an option. Because being a dragon, they have the power to breathe. So I think it's safe to say that Seto is a member of the DTF. We hit the rogue. first fight was a success. We've defeated the monsters. Now you notice Sato Cat's mana points here have gone down because of the breath weapon. So there's a lot of similarities between this and the older wizardry games, but also a lot of things that are new too. Saddlecat says, I do be a part of that team. I don't think Danny knows about that. We should, we should let Danny know about the DTF. 
Are you DTF, Danny? You hear some kind of rustle or flap from somewhere nearby. Perhaps it is only the wind descending from one of the towers. I don't think Danny is DTF. So we're back in the opening ch opening hall here. So one of the options you'll see here is search. Anytime you see something interesting like this here, you can always search or rest. Rest is important. In fact, let's do that real quick. I want to show you what that's all about. Oh, but I saw something. Look at that. Neatly inscribed upon the metal face of the chest are these words, open me second. Oh. Neatly inscribed on the metal face of this chest are the words, Open me first. So we have two alcoves here, both with chests. We're going to go ahead and save the game. And let's see what happens if we try to open these. Let's see. I want to see something. I want to see who has the better thief skills. Kyler. Hmm. F a skill of four. And what about Lulu? A skill of zero. So Kyler's going to be the one to try to open the chest. Kyler thinks there's no trap. The chest was not trapped. Inside the chest are several items and a scroll which reads, A cure but twice, and healing thrice. One life for thee times seven. A cure but twice, and healing thrice. One life for thee times seven. Ah, there we go. So we have a bunch of healing items here. Three light heal potions, one cure light condition, one cure poison, and an amulet of life. Who's going to take this? We'll give that to Sato, since that's our healer. So this one says, open me second. Inside the chest are some gold coins, a sword, and a scroll which reads, Beware the narrow corridors of the mind. I found a sword of striking. That's fantastic. We're going to give that to Trevi. The reason we're doing that is Kyler eventually is not going to really use weapons. So we have a sword of striking. Okay, let's equip that sword of striking. And let's go ahead and save the game. Oh, I did not mean to rest. There we go. Alright, so we found some cool things here. No chance in opening the door. No real chance of picking the lock either.
Okay, so these doors remain off limits to us. Let's check out some of these other ones. Lots of locked doors. Let's check out some of these towers. You heard something go bump around the corner up ahead. So we're ascending the tower. You hear the clattering of footsteps running up the stairs ahead of you. So there's something up here. You see some breadcrumbs. Oops. And then suddenly a door slams to the right. So we are outside on the top of the castle tower. To the east is the edge of the swamp, a cold and gloomy place that forebodes a land of evil. Perhaps the tales of demons and witches aren't just rumors after all. From behind the door you hear a very strange noise. It almost sounds like something is pressing up against it and breathing heavily. An odd voice speaks from behind the door. Go away. I said go away. I'm not coming out, whoever you are, and you can't make me. So we get to type an answer here. This is one of the cool things about this game is you can communicate with people and characters that are in the game. So let's try something like this. So no answer. And no chance of opening the door. And we're not strong enough try to open it. So we'll have to remember this location and come back later. Oh, unless we can try again. So they're going to ignore anything except whatever the correct phrase is. So we'll find out sooner or later. So that's the Eastern Tower. Let's go check out the Western Tower. We have two rats, though, that have appeared. Well, these rats are agile. So there's one rat gone. I've defeated the rats. Every survivor earns 50 experience points. One thing I want to do here is I think I want to unequip these shurikens because I want to save those for a certain time. I'll say no weapon. This character will do better without any weapons or at least with 
weapons that are appropriate to its class. I'll tell you what, let's hop over to that healing fountain before we go any further. Oh, I see. That only heals their mana. So let's rest here. Let's take a moment to rest. Try to recover these hit points. Now, of course, when you're resting in the dungeon, you open yourself up to encounters. Like that. And Sadow is still Sado and Trevi and Claire are still asleep. They did not wake up from their rest. But that went much smoother this time. There we go. And let's see what's on top of this tower. You sense that something is amiss, you're being watched. And then it's an encounter with bats. Three vampire bats and four... One vampire bat and four bats. So I want to see something. Lulu has this loot. I forget what it does. Let's try it on these four. I think it might put them to sleep. It's been a minute. Can the game audio come up a little bit, please? Yeah, let me see what we can do. There's not a lot of audio to hear, to be quite honest. But let me see what we can do. I'll tell you what, let's kill the music. And let's increase the desktop audio. And we'll cast an energy blast. Yep, the loot makes them fall asleep, so that'll come in handy. So basically, as long as Lulu has this loot in her possession, we have a free sleep spell. And we're going to use that loot on the vampire bat. And it's important to note, too, the more you use a certain skill, the faster it will grow and get better. Look at them asleep in the air. So we need to watch Claire. Claire has taken some damage here. At least the vampire bat is now gone. We're going to try the loot again. And Sano being a priest, I think we're going to try a curing spell. Heal wounds on Claire. So that's, that's working out well. 
So that's a big experience hall compared to the other ones we've seen. So we're here on the outside again. Looking southward, you see far beyond the castle gate into the distant blue mountains. Here's a door that's open. Oh, and what do we have here? Four creeping vines. So let's see, can we put plants to sleep? We'll try it. Sato is going to use the breath weapon, and this time Danny is going to try an energy blast. Yes, I'm clicking it. Is it not working? What's the deal? Oh, I don't have enough power to do that, I see. Okay, back up. So we'll just dodge. Settle breathes acid. Kills one. And we can put the plants to sleep. Settle Cat says, I'm loving this. That's awesome. We've defeated the monsters. Piles of old debris crowd, debris crowd this small tower room, most of it looking quite rotted. So let's search. You found a moldy old breastplate of leather, and though worn, seems good enough to be effective. Very nice. Let's give that to Lulu. I don't remember if Lulu has one or not. No, Lulu does not. So let's equip the sling and the stones and the leather. There we go. We have an upgrade there for Lulu. I would like to interject that the acid breath is from pickles. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. So I tell you, we need something, some kind of ambient sounds in the back here besides just this, this quiet dungeon noise that we're hearing. Did you hear that? It's just a very chirpy little noise. Which, keep in mind, at the time that this game came out, people didn't have speakers on their desk, right? The computer had one little speaker in it. Maybe about this big. A little round speaker that was only intended for beeps and boops and things like that. So these noises coming from your computer some ambient dungeon noises. You know, you're, you're, you're joking, but it was groundbreaking at the time. So being in this room with a closed door, this would be a good place to rest. You're safer behind a closed door, unless the rat shows up. Cat says, no, I'm being serious. So it really was groundbreaking, because like I said, those things were just made for beeps, and, you know, beep codes were a thing. If your computer was having trouble starting, you could listen to how many times it beeped, and it would help you diagnose what may be wrong with the system. But here we have boom, boom, ch -ch -ch -ch, and all these other little noises. It was hot stuff at the time. So all we have here is a little corridor connecting the two hallways. Interesting. I bet you this will be another one. Nope. This is a top floor. Let's walk through and get a layout before we open any doors. What's down here? Uh oh, I opened the door. Four bats. them.
You may hear wind chimes in the background. That's actually real wind chimes outside my window. It's oddly fitting, though. I don't catch this. I thought it was the game. No, I'm afraid that's real. Ow. Love the wind chimes, Danny says. Ow. All right. So this second floor is kind of interesting. I'm seeing some cool stuff here. feel for the floor. Then we'll decide what we want to open and what we don't want to open. Alright, so lots of doors here. Let's start with this door in the upper left corner. Ow. It's locked. Any chance of opening it? Nope. That's okay. If I remember right, there's keys somewhere in the game. Ow. Ow. Locked as well. Is this one locked? Ow. Yep. Let's see what's down here. Ow. Locked. Ow. Locked. Ow. Everything's locked. Except this one. Claire is looking a little low. Thank you for reminding me. So we'll fix that. Shadow Cat will help Claire out with a heal wound spell. Rogue has fallen asleep. This dude's asleep. How are y'all not hitting him? There we go. An old wooden table and several chairs are rotting away in the center of the room, and fragments of broken flagons and rub rubble cover the floor. So, let's search. Nothing. Let's search every square. Here we go. You found a ring with two odd-looking black keys, each with a handle in the shape of a small spade. Two. Key of spades. All right. Give these to Lulu. So maybe we have some keys to some of these doors now. They're not making it through his armor. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. We'll rest up here. And we got some creeping vines. Oh my, a lot of vines. Look at that. So we'll have to be very careful. This could be potentially bad. Oh, and who's awake? The only ones that are awake are... Right, let me back up. All right. Cancel options. Danny, Danny and Trevi are the only ones awake. So Danny's going to cast a spell here. What do we have? Sleep. Probably be a good one to use on the six vines. Thankfully, that was pretty effective. Alright, 
but everybody's awake now except for Kyler. Claire. Lulu's going to use that loop on the other group of vines. Sato's going to breathe on these vines. Danny is going to try an energy blast. Now we're talking. There we go. Ow. Okay, so. Kyler's still sleepy. He's sleeping through the whole thing. Claire is going to fight. Lulu is going to, you guessed it, use the loot on the six vines. Sato is going to cast a spell of healing, or no, no we're not, but we have some healing potions. Use it on herself. Danny does not have enough cost to, but she's got this magic missile spell. We'll use that on the six vines. And it fizzled. So the reason that spell fizzled is it was being read off a scroll and the character has to have a certain skill in like magic scrolls in order to have that fire off. So the higher the skill, the more chance of success. was a good hit. Playing this really, really takes me back. I was like in the 6th or 7th grade. No, 7th grade when I played this. All right, that was a nice uh, bit of uh, experience. So let's take a moment to save the game. And let's rest everybody up again. So that'll do for now. So we found some keys in this room. And what I don't remember is if we can use oh. them where they're used. Are they used here? So there's no chance to pick this lock. So let's try to use one of these keys. Use... Lulu has the keys, right? Key of spades. No effect. Alright, so we can't waste them. Imagine we'll know the right door to use. But for right now, I'm just going about it this way because I have very little recollection about a lot of the things in this game. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now there was another door. Let's. See if it does anything here. Nope. So there's another stairway up. Keep the belfry closed. I'll tell you what, before we go in here, let's try to rest these guys just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm sure we'll find bats in here, right? Isn't that the joke? Looking up the large well to the top, you see only darkness. On the floor, however, you find the remains of many small rodents and some bits of blood and what appears to be excrement that fell from above. Let's search. Nothing. So you can see above us, there's that hole. So whatever's up here is probably dangerous. Probably a bunch of bats, like we said. A large blackened bell hangs silently within the top of the belfry, covered with sooty molds and splotches of bat droppings. A long, thick rope descends from the bell down the well and is used to ring it by holding on and jumping in. It also appears to be the only way across the well. So if I remember right, to get across the hall, a character has to grab the rope and swing across and that does require a skill check of some sort. Let me, let's, let's see what happens. Let's save the game before we do anything. Ow, ow, ow. Ow. Attempt to swing across the belfry. It was successful. The bell has disturbed the denizens of the belfry. So here we have rats and bats. Of course, Lulu's going to use the loot on the second set of bats. Set Owl is going to breathe on the rats. Well, on the second set of bats, couldn't reach the rats. Ow. Bat dies. Also, we have two vampire bats. Okay. Probably all vampire bats, honestly. Lulu's going to sing them to sleep. Sadow's going to breathe on the vampire bats. Ow. Kyler's looking low and is poisoned. Alright, so a couple things we're going to do here. Tyler's going to fight, Trevi's going to fight, Claire is going to fight, Lulu will once again use the loot on the bats, Sadow is going to heal wounds on Kyler, and I think Danny's going to go ahead and use an energy blast as well bats. Oh no, Kyler's dead. If only that heal wounds would have hit sooner. The rats have advanced. This ended up being a tough fight. We have that life amulet, though. We'll use that. 
Ow. Boy, that was uneventful. Tell you what, the loot is like a massive cheat. I love it. Dead too. Oh no. This vampire bat is rough. Ow. And Lulu is poisoned. Ow. Boy, we are not doing well. Saddle's dead. Danny's dead. This is awful. We have one guy left standing. Ow. Ow. Ah. Whole party dead. But that's okay. Because this game does let you save and reload as you might expect. So we will resume a saved game, and here we are, it's right where we left off. We'll attempt to swing across the belfry, and we'll try this again. So yeah, later wizardry games are much more forgiving. So this time we don't have rats. So we'll take this a little more seriously. Put these vampire bats to sleep. We're going to breathe on these vampire bats. And we are going to shoot them with an energy blast. We're going to go all out. Player's dead. One hit. Good lord. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Someone says, oh my god. Ow. These guys aren't playing. So I have a different strategy. I have a different strategy. We well, guess we're going to put them to sleep. And yes, Shadow Cat's going to breathe on them. But Danny is also going to cast a sleep spell. We're not taking any chances. Now everybody's asleep. We have two sleeping bats. Now how did I punch a bat and not hit it? Actually, land a hit but I got no penetration. Kyler's dead. Oh my word. Says, oh god. So yeah, obviously this is this this fight here is the uh, you know the, the check fight. This is Ow. where you you determine if you're Ow. ready to proceed or not. The first real challenge of the dungeon. So we defeated the monsters. And we leveled up, of course. But I actually think we're actually gonna reload that save. And we're gonna try to do better, because I want the whole party to level up, right? So we are going to quit game, no save. We're going to resume that save. Try this one more time. Settle Cat says, good lord. Here come the bats. Oh, we got an even bigger fight this time. It's okay. Let's 
Trevi actually have spells? No, I didn't think so. Not yet. All right, Lulu, let's do your thing. So Lulu's going to put this vampire bat to sleep because these guys are off the chain. Danny is also going to cast sleep. This time, Danny's going to cast sleep on the group of bats. All right. Seven damage on that. That's pretty good. Seven, eight, nine. Vampire bat is gone. Already doing much better. I'm feeling good about this one. Lulu's going to use that loot on these rats. Sato's going to breathe on these bats. And does Danny have another spell in her pocket? No, not, not for sleep. But we can blast these these bats. Ow. 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 All right, Danny killed a bat. Rats are asleep. All right, let's do this. Let's get this bat. Go ahead and try to put this bat to sleep since it's causing us some problems. Ow. Kyler's looking rough. Bat is gone. Alright. All we have left are three rats. Lulu's going to try to put him to sleep. Sadow is going to heal Kyler. Oh, and he's dead. Golly, every time. Every time. Now, here's a question I don't know the answer to. Can I use that resurrection amulet during a fight? I don't know the answer to that. Once upon a time, I knew the answer. We're going to find out. Nope, it fizzled. Has to be used outside of combat, I'm afraid. Actually, let me back that up. There we go, that was a good hit. Let's see if we can knock him out this round. There we go. I'll take it. And let's see what we can do here. Can Danny or can Sato use that amulet? He, yes, and Kyler is back among the living. So let's cure him up. Oh, we're out of healing spells. Marching order will be Trevi, Kyler, Claire, Lulu, Set Out, and Danny. So we've made it across. Did it use the amulet up? Let's see. My guess would be yes, but let's find out. Amulet's still there. So it may have a certain number of charges, or there may be a percentage to break 
every time. I don't know the answer. We are going to save the game here, though, because we're going to try to rest up. There we go, resting slowly but surely. Do another rest. Hope we don't get interrupted. All right, Sato should have that spell back, though, to heal Kyler. I think that's as good as we'll get for right now. So, Seto Cats is interesting. If I remember right, I think... I'll have to look this up, but I think every time you use it, there's a percentage Ow. that it might, you know, get used. Hmm. So let's try to use one of those keys here. No effect. Can we open the door? No chance. If I swing across, will it trigger another fight? Yes, indeed. So that's the downside to swinging across the um, the 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 rope here, but. If you look, we've also found sort of an infinite EXP uh, glitch here. This is a way to level up really well. So just a word of warning, this fight here might be my last for the evening. There's family stuff coming down the pike here that I've got to do. Oh wow, look at that. That breath is an AoE weapon. When it lands, it's fantastic. So regardless of the outcome, after this fight, I think we're going to pause for the night, but we've all got a great idea of how this works now. And we've all seen, you know, the game in action. And so we can really, really jump in tomorrow night. This fight went a lot smoother than the last one. There we go. Did we level up? Why did we not level up this time? Oh, and look, and I didn't even swing across it properly. It wasn't a successful swing. So this is a good stopping point, because it's about supper time here. So what do we think about this game? Kind of slow paced, but very moody, very, you know, it's a period piece for sure. I've always liked it. Saddlekin says I'm loving it. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. You know, so many people watch games on Twitch and they're fast-paced action games, battle royales, FPSs, things like that. And this is quite the opposite of that. Um, so I never really know. We did make it across. Um, I never really know what people are going to think of things like this. But I've always found these types of games enjoyable. Let's venture our way back out to the main room here. Back to the first floor. Oh, I see how to get into it. It's down here. Or not. There it is. So 
Settle Cat says, I want to play it. Again, it's on Steam. It's usually very cheap, too. So this is where we'll save the game. And we'll resume tomorrow night, and we'll play. It's easier for me to dedicate time in the evening than it is during the day, so we'll really uh, play for a good two hours at least tomorrow night, I think. And we'll see what we can manage to, uh, to accomplish. But thanks for tuning in and checking this out with me. And we'll continue, we'll proceed a bit tomorrow and see if we can actually make some headway. Hope everybody has a great evening, and I will see you all tomorrow.